Hey guys, Tyler Deese Power Products here, and today we are here with Rhett from SNS, and today we are going to talk about the differences between the stock CP4 and their DCR conversion on the 6.7 Power Stroke. So thanks for joining us here today, Rhett. Tell us the difference about the DCR conversion versus the stock CP4. Yeah, for sure. No, I appreciate you guys having me out. So super excited to you know tell you a little more about the DCR compared to the CP4 and why the DCR really is the ultimate solution for the 6.7 Power Stroke. Um, so all 6.7 Power Strokes on the road today feature this pump right here, the CP4, 11 to 24. With the CP4, right, in a perfect world, that pump can go and run all day long. The issue being that we don't live in a perfect world, you know? Mm -hmm. We have issues with fuel quality, debris can enter the system, and they're very, very sensitive to external debris. The issue being that the base design in the bottom end, that's where the problem is, the bottom end of this pump. Mm -hmm. It's an aggressive two-lobe cam design. And what can happen is, in a perfect world, they ride on that cam like that all day long. And then those plungers down in the bore are going up and down, up and down, pumping your high-pressure mm -hmm. fuel. But what can happen is if you get a piece of debris or who knows what's stuck in that roller, it can cause that roller to skid and then you're creating metal debris. Mm -hmm. Which we all know is super common with exactly. diesel fuel. So Exactly. The way the CP4 is fed is really the issue as to why that happens. So it comes straight from your fuel tank, you know, the low pressure side mm -hmm. to the bottom end of the pump. Mm -hmm. From the bottom end of the pump, comes straight to your, your IMB, your FCA, your metering unit, you know, mm -hmm. depending on manufacturer, what you want to call it. This inlet metering valve is helping, you know, regulate the fuel going to your high pressure side, you mm -hmm. know, your injectors, your rails. So when the pump fails from the bottom end, making metal debris, mm -hmm. there's nothing stopping it from hitting your metering unit. Mm -hmm. Which also your guys' disaster unit Correct. helps solve that yep. issue. Yep, our DPK can won't prevent the pump from failing, but basically blocks everything in the case and keeps it there. Mm -hmm. That way it's not reaching your high pressure side. So and that way you don't have to buy a new set of injectors once your CP4 grenades. <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. When the CP4 fails, I mean, it makes fine metal debris because it's a metal on metal contact with that roller on that cam. Mm -hmm. When it fails, it's not just wrecking the bottom end of the pump, it's creating tons of collateral damage. Mm -hmm. Your injectors, your rails, your lines, all of that debris being sent back to your, mm -hmm. your to your fuel tank. So. Which, by the way, I've heard can get very pricey. I've heard some quotes of upwards of ten thousand, yes. twelve thousand dollars to fix. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. Ten, ten, fifteen grand for a new fuel system. They, they aren't, they aren't cheap. So you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a worthwhile investment. Absolutely. For a DCR, even a DPK. <clears throat> As you kind of touched on a little bit ago, the DPK. So that was the best option we had for a long, long time. Mm. The reason being is a CP3 or another high pressure fuel pump will not fit in the valley of a 6.7 power stroke mm. because it is so tight. There was only room for a CP4 mm -hmm. up until the DCR. Yeah, these things are shoehorned in yes. there. Like, yes, they there's are, not a tight. lot of space. <laughs> they're tight, for sure. With the DPK, basically what we are doing is we're feeding the top end of the pump or your IMV mm -hmm. in the bottom end of the pump independently with clean filtered fuel straight from your stage two filter there in the engine bay. Mm -hmm. So. The key is that bypass block. What mm -hmm. that bypass block is doing is it raises up your metering unit, you set that block in the pump, metering unit sits in that block. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing is if your pump is to fail, we're just keeping all the case fuel contained in, in the, the pump. case. Yeah. Exactly, where the debris is made. So you're not ruining your entire fuel system. Exactly, yeah. so it's just stopping it from reaching mm -hmm. the metering unit. Yeah. And then rerouting all that case fuel mm -hmm. back to that return side filter that sits in the firewall. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it looks like, so this is actually the set that you guys had on the truck that you purposefully Correct. made the system fail yep. and tested it for you know the the media of this new product the DCR go ahead and show us what's it what's in the filter so yeah for sure so you can see the debris made by a CP4 failure you can see how dark and like gray that that filter media is and then down in that filter you can see it makes some really fine glitter and that glitter is fine enough to make it through the screen Mm -hmm. on your, your metering unit yeah. within the pump. And this is from the DPK. So if, if you don't have a DPK from SNS, then that all goes in to your injectors and your fuel rails and mm -hmm. everything, and that's what ruins your entire fuel system. Correct. Yep, yep. And then just as a little piece, <clears throat> so a couple years ago we did a, a video of our DPK mm -hmm. showing that, hey, it does work. You know, we're not going to put something out there if we're not yeah. confident in it. So. On our personal 2016 Power Stroke, we purposely took one of the rollers and ground it flat and then rotated it sideways so the cam and that roller was eating itself to death with our DPK on the truck. 
mm -hmm. and then drove it 180 miles round trip to an event. The truck made it there, the truck made it back. That's the filter from the truck. Um, tested the injectors, they tested fine. Yeah. And then all we did was we took the DPK off and put a, put a DCR on it and that truck's still running today. Perfect, yeah, on it. awesome. So. so the moral of the story is, is if you're not gonna buy a DCR, at least get the DPK to protect your entire fuel system. So when your CP4 does fail, then you can just upgrade your DCR and you don't have to replace your entire fuel system. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. That's the key, really. I mean, stopping the problem before it becomes one. Yeah, and absolutely. That's, that's where the DCR comes in. Yeah. So. There's also something I wanted to touch on with the DCR conversion. We get a lot of comments about how much the DCR conversion costs, and I just wanted to touch on the fact that this is very inexpensive compared to when you're CP4 grenades and you don't have a DPK on it, and it destroys your entire fuel system. We've seen quotes from ten dollars to $12,000 to replace the CP4, which also they're going to put another CP4 on it, which could also go bad again, exactly. and then the entire fuel system. So this 10 times out of 10 is always going to be the best bet. It's gonna be preventative. It's gonna cost you less than when this goes bad. There's nothing bad you could say about the price of this thing. And then also, if you're not looking to spend that much on the DCR upgrade yet, at least put a DPK on your CP4. So when that goes bad, it catches all those metal shavings and everything, doesn't destroy your entire fuel system. And then when this goes bad, you go to the DCR, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Cool. cool. Well, um, show us how hard it is to actually spin the CP4 from the factory versus spinning the DCR. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you can sit here and you can spin the DCR, I mean, all day long, two fingers, no problem, right? You try to get over here and you spin the, the CP4 and you can see it takes a little bit more, a little bit more force to, to turn that guy. And that comes from the aggressive two lobe cam design mm -hmm. and then you've got springs pushing the bucket mm -hmm. within the rollers down on that cam yep. and if you've ever worked on a motor before these things are like mini motors basically if you ever worked on a motor before you know that more friction equals more heat which equals bad yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it, it doesn't and it doesn't help they're super sensitive so you know it, it mm -hmm. all comes from that that bottom end interface the aggressive two lobe cam design with the rollers and the buckets. We've even seen these buckets will rotate and it'll ride sideways on that cam, mm -hmm. causing metal debris. Um, another thing that we've seen is, depending on the type of failure, they fail in so many types of ways that this bucket can fall out, oh, or the, yeah. the, the roller can fall out of the bucket and get lodged in the pump. And we've oh. seen them where the pump cases will actually split because instead of the cam pushing mm -hmm. the bucket up and down, it's trying to push it out. Mm. and that creates enough force to split split the case. So there's actually multiple types of failures for the mm -hmm. CP4s. There's one where it basically will seize up from the amount of yep. you know heat and shavings and stuff, mm -hmm. and then it will actually physically grenade from yep. that roller falling down yep. into the yep. pump. We've seen that. Yep. Interesting. Yep, and we've also seen them where in select cases where it's actually spun the crank gear. Wow. Um, in unfortunate cases, and that's a whole, whole new way. I was gonna say, you don't want that yeah. to happen. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why it's very imperative, you know, Stop it before it becomes an issue. Yeah, so. absolutely. Awesome. Well, cool. Tell us more about the DCR conversion. Yeah, for sure. So for the longest time, you know, there wasn't a, a pump alternative option for the 6.7 Power Stroke, strictly for the reason that, you know, it's a very tight valley. Down Not there. a lot of room. Not a lot of room, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the reason there isn't a CP3 conversion for these trucks. You physically cannot fit a CP3 within the valley mm -hmm. of the 6.7. And correct me if I'm wrong, they designed the engine around the CP4. Correct, yep. It, it was basically designed around the CP4 because it's, you know, it's cheap and easy to manufacture. So mm. that's why you see it in a lot of different very, uh, applications. With the DCR, so it was a, a co-engineered project between us and Stanadyne and Pure Power. So it's a Stanadyne-based pump. So the, the base foundation of the pump mm -hmm. has been proven, has been used. The main market was overseas in a lot of industrial applications. Mm. You know, we're talking like dump trucks, bulldozers, things along those lines. Heavy, heavy heavy, heavy equipment, yeah. correct. So the pump actually started life, you know, in a much bigger application than what you'd find in like oh, interesting. F-350 or yeah. F-350. So that's why it actually has, you know. They're tried and true. They're yeah. Tested. Yeah, it has 25% more displacement than what you'd find from a stock CP4. Mm -hmm. The secret, or I guess the bottom end design that makes it better or different than the CP4 is that it has patented eccentric offset cam, and it's actually pressure lubricated. This fuel through oh, wow. the cam, and that cam, and that bushing right here just rides yeah. on that cam. So 
So as that offset cam bends around and around and that bushing rides on that cam, and then you got two plungers or pistons mm -hmm. inside of the pump that as that goes back and forth, that's what's creating your high pressure fuel. So, so it's more of a piston style rather than a cam and roller correct, style. Correct, So, And that bushing really helps to spread the load you know, within the pump as it's creating that pressure. Mm. You don't have rollers that are gonna Friction, turn sideways. Friction, heat. Yeah, you don't yeah. have you know, a bucket that can turn sideways. You don't have a roller that can seize. Mm -hmm. It's a much more robust design. I mean, heavy duty is a good way to put it. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We actually had one of our uh, customers, he installed a DCR on his truck. He was getting a high rail pressure code. We uh, took the PCV out of the back of the driver's side rail, you know, that helps regulate the rail pressure mm -hmm. and found that it was just full of rust and junk. He had wow. gotten water in his system mm -hmm. and the low side fuel pump, the low pressure fuel pump was starting to rust and it mm -hmm. sent all of that debris up through the pump to the high pressure side. Mm. And the DCR actually handled it quite well. There's a little bit of scoring on the inside of the pump, but yeah, we tested that pump, tested within our, 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 our variants. Um, that truck, you know, is back on the road with that same DCR that wow. ate basically that water yeah. and that rust. So it's a, it's a much more durable pump because if that same situation would have happened yeah. with that pump. CP4 is not doing that. Yeah, it would have <laughs> been a different story for sure. Yeah, yeah, it could be way more catastrophic exactly. too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So tell us about the fitment on this thing. You know, it, it started life in a different application, heavy duty type of machinery. So it did have to go through a few adaptations in order to, to get it to fit within the six, seven power stroke. So, you know, the base design stayed the same, but the flange, hose routing, high pressure lines, things along those lines did need some tweaking. But that's kind of what our specialty is. You know, we've done it with the CP3 conversions for the mm -hmm. LMLs and the 2019, 2020 Rams. So, super popular. So, yes, yeah, yeah, very, <laughs> very popular product. But yeah, we uh, did everything we could to make sure that it was an OE fit, OE function product, you know, making sure that the return and the supply low pressure lines fit just how they needed to. Same with the high pressure lines. That way people, you know, don't have to bend all kinds of things out of the way to get mm -hmm. it to fit. It's a direct drop in, no tuning required option. Um, but, but more displacement. But yes, yes, roughly 25% more displacement than what you'd find in your factory CP4. And there's no replacement for displacement, folks. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, if you're looking to install one of these DCR conversions, make sure you block out a weekend. It's, I'd say it's like a medium level kind of project. That They've got great color instructions. Make sure you read the instructions. I know we're men, we don't read instructions. It's totally fine, but this is something you're gonna wanna read the instructions on. They include a list of all the tools that are needed to do this project. So make sure you look at that first. Make sure you have everything and go to the tool store before you dive into this. So this project's gonna entail taking your intakes off and then it's also going to entail taking your fan off and then the vacuum pump that's on the front and then it'll have the nut for the CP4 right there. And if you have any other questions, make sure you hit the link in the description below or check out dieselpowerproducts.com. Thank you again so much, yeah. Rhett, for coming out. We appreciate really appreciate it. Me. It's been such a blast. We're having a lot of fun with this for one. Sure. So stay tuned for the install video that we have on this DCR conversion for the F250 Tremor that we have here for any questions you might have about the install.